order to save uh, time, not grieving the Holy Spirit, but giving the gist of what we're going to study today. So we stand up, please, and let's pray. Father, we're so thankful once again for gathering us. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your kindness, for the salvation that you afforded us. We thank you, O oh God, for your word that is uh, keep on challenging us, O oh God, to do things that are according to your will. And we thank you, O oh God, because you have given us uh, the source of absolute truth that we can rely on so that we can approve all things, O oh God, and uh, ascertain if they are from you or if they are just being invented by men because of uh, their wisdom, because of the tradition, and other things, Lord, that uh, tend to satisfy, Lord, the caprice in their lives. I pray, O oh God, that we'll be able, Lord, as we stand behind the pulpit to only preach your word and uh, your will and desire for our lives. So help me, O oh God, to be a blessing to your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, so we have studied the spectrum of error and uh, apostasy, and we saw that uh, it goes up to what we call reprobation, wherein a person will not be able or unable to know the truth anymore. The Bible says that there are people who are ever, ever learning, but are not able to come into the knowledge of the truth. And then in uh, several locations in the book of Romans, God said that God gave them up because of uh, they, they let their heart to be hardened when it comes to the word of God. So apostasy is something that we should be concerned about because it was prophesied by God that what will happen in this world is it will become worse and worse and that there's going to be a great falling away. Meaning to say, uh, turning back, turning our backs from the truth and following those that are heretic, erroneous and people will become apostates and reprobates. So if this is prophesied in our time, therefore it is happening and we have to be careful not to allow apostasy to in infiltrate our church or to get into our church so as to make us one of the numbers of those who have fallen aside because of the work of the devil in destroying the church that the Lord Jesus Christ built. Remember, the devil is in the business of counterfeiting. When God started the church, the devil started churches. When God preached the gospel, the devil preached another gospel. When God gave us the Holy Spirit, God, uh, the devil gave another spirit. And when uh, God gave us his word, then the devil created so many so-called Bibles in order to uh, confuse the people so that they will not know what is the word of God anymore or will be confused to the point that they will not care anymore. So there are four areas wherein the devil is trying to infiltrate the churches in order to destroy and make the church uh, fall into what we call apostasy. And they are written here in Jude verses 10 and 11. Can we go there? Please. Jude verses 10 and 11. The Bible says, But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perish in gainsaying of Korah. So these are, uh, are three of the four areas wherein the devil is trying to infiltrate the church, as I have said a while ago, so that the church will become apostate and will never be able to do what God designed the church to be. You see, when the Lord established the church, He has a purpose. Amen. The Lord will not do anything without a purpose. There is always a reason and there is always a season under the sun. When God created man, there is a purpose. He created man for His glory. When God created the family, there is a purpose. He created family to exemplify the Trinity. When God created government, there is a purpose. He created government to take care of peace and order in a country. And when God uh, established the church, 
there is a purpose so that the church will go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, and to teach them all the counsel of God. Amen. So that is the purpose. So the devil knew that if the church will do his purpose, then he's going to lose a lot of people. Many people will come into the knowledge of the truth. So what the devil is doing is he, would, he is trying to destroy the church that the Lord Jesus Christ built. Because when the agent of salvation is destroyed, then people will not be saved anymore. There will be no more proclamation of the truth and therefore people will not be able to believe on the only begotten Son of God who died on the cross of Calvary. And then the inroad that he is using is as we have read in verse number 11 of Jude. The first one is uh, what we call rejecting God's authority. Rejecting God's authority. The Bible says, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and run greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perish in the gainsaying of Kore, or in the Old Testament is pronounced as Korah. So we can see here that the story of the rebellion of Korah is found in Numbers chapter 16. For the sake of time, we're not going to go there, but I will just pick several verses in order for you to understand the background of the gainsaying of Korah. First, gainsaying means to contradict. It means to dispute, to resist, with respect to God's appointed authority. So, meaning to say, the gainsaying of Korah is uh, one that instigates people to rebel against authority. In Numbers chapter 16, verse 1, we can see that Korah and his associates took men. They incited others even those in the position of leadership, like Aaron and uh, Miriam, to apostatize or to go against the authority that God established, which in this case is Moses. Then in verse number 3, we are told that they gathered themselves against Moses and Aaron. So after inciting people to side with them, then they actually rebelled against the authority that the Lord established in Israel. As I have said, in the person of Moses. And in verse number 28, Moses claimed that his authority came from God. So we can see that the gainsaying of Korah is rejecting the authority that God established in the lives of every person that he has created. He they rejected the authority of the home. They are rejecting the authority of the government. They are rejecting the authority of the church. And they are rejecting the authority of the pastor or pastors in the church. Let us see of how this can be applied in our time. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 8. This is what the Bible says. Now as Janus and Jambres, which stood Moses, so do this also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. So you can see that there is what we call resisting the authority. So this is the gain saying of Kore. And one, once resistance of authority entered the church, then the church is on her way to what we call apostasy. When people started to say no to what God is telling them what to do. Let us look at 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 10 to 11. These are the characteristics of the gain saying of Kore. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. So we can see here, number one, false teachers despise government. You see, we believe in the separation of church and state. Amen. But we do not despise government. 
God has commanded us to be subject to those that are in power. Because every authority that were placed in our lives are placed by God in order to be a blessing to us. The Bible says they are going to be a terror to the sinners, but they are going to be a blessing to those that are loving the truth. So, as a church or as a child of God, we must be subjected to the government because it was given to us by God. But remember, there is what we call hierarchy of authority. The highest authority, of course, is God. And whatever authority established by God that will go against the will of God, that we can resist, but in a nice way, in a humble way, not going out into the street and uh, shouting in victims against our government, but prayerfully resist, uh, humbly disobey, doing the will of God in our lives. As, as it was exemplified by Peter, he preached, he was imprisoned, he was uh, released, and then he preached again. He was warned not to preach. He said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So, but us as a person and as a church, we must be subjected to the proper authority. Amen. But the reprobates, they despise government. Like for example, Jehovah's Witness, they will not stand up when uh, the national anthem is being played. They're not going to salute to the flag of a country. Why? Because they are reprobates and they despise government. They will not go into battle even though the country needs them in times of war. Simply because they are not subject to authorities that were established by the Lord. Look at Jude verse number 8. Likewise also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. You see, we have a president who curse a lot. There are always curses whenever he made a speech. He will curse people. He will curse governments. He will curse almost everybody, including those that are in religion. But no matter what, we will not subscribe to what he is doing. We are not going to uh, speak evil of him, but we are not going to go along with what he's doing. Like what happened in the National Baptist Day. He cursed. We cannot control that. But we can control our reaction. We will look at what, what he's doing as a president, but we are not going to subscribe to what he is saying as the president of our country. But no matter what, we must be subjected to them because they were given by God to us. Sometimes you may ask, why will God allow a, a, a person like him to become the president of the Philippines? Maybe the answer is, we became so hard-headed that it needs a person like him to put us into our proper place. You see, God will give what is what we call a right in order for us to become right or to do things that are right in the sight of the Lord through the government that he established. Not only that, but false teachers despise dominion. Meaning to say, the power or right of governing and controlling or sovereign authority. Look at verse Titus 1.10. Because they do not want dominion. Dominion means to be dominated. They despise that. Look at Titus 1.10. The Bible says, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. So meaning to say, this uh, gainsaying of Kore enticed people not to be dominated by anybody. That's why they despise government because the government is above them. So these people are those who would not recognize anybody that is above them because in their own belief, 
they believe that they are higher than other people. That's why even though they are member of a church, they wanted to take control. They're going to incite followers, gain followers, and then they will go against the authority in the church, in the government, and even in their family. So they are unruly, will not be ruled. And the gainsaying of Kore adds up to one thing. Apostasy embodies rejection of God's authority. That is apostasy. When you reject the authority of God, you are becoming or you are an apostate. So what are these authority? Number one, they reject the authority of the Word of God. They reject the authority of the Word of God. They go by their own thinking. They go by their own philosophy. They go by the commandments of men. And they do not follow the Word of God and they do not believe that the Word of God is the final authority when it comes to faith and practice. That is why when a pastor insists on something that is not according to the Word of God, then that pastor is apostatizing. Like teaching something that is found in the Word of God, like what was uh, were mentioned a while ago, they will insist because they are rejecting the Word of God. They will insist because they do not believe that the Word of God has the final say in everything that we do in life. Look at Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 4. But he said, and answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. As Christians, we must live according to the word of God. Amen. Wala akong pakialam kung ano yung iniisip mo. Wala kayong pakialam. Hindi nyo dapat pakialaman kung ano yung iniisip ko. What is important is that behind this pulpit, what is being preached is the word of God rightly divided. Because they said, well, pastor, we're preaching the word of God. Yes, you may be preaching the word of God, but when you preach it in a wrong context, and it is wrongly divided, it is no longer the word of God. It is your word, and it is your interpretation. That's the problem today. That's why there are so many pastors who will uh, subscribe to good sayings, but they are not found in the word of God. Like for example, what he said a while ago, you respect the uh, older pastors because they are in the ministry for a long, long time. Of course, we need to respect them, but our respect to them is not to allow them to slide by if what they're saying is wrong. Because by allowing them to say something wrong and not doing anything about it, you are disrespecting them. Because proper respect is not allowing a person to live in error and say something that is erroneous. That's why sometimes it is a uh, it is so hard that, that uh, some people would have to do something even though it is against their will because or in the name of love. I saw this uh, status or post on Facebook and he said, sometimes it is very hard to do something that is so heavy in your heart because of the people that you love. That's good to hear, man. That's good to hear. Uh, you need to sacrifice. Even though it is very hard for you because of the people that you love. But ladies and gentlemen, if you are going to read between the lines, it is as easy as compromise. That's it. I have to do this because even though in my heart, it is heavy because of the people that I love. Ladies and gentlemen, we must do things because it is uh, being said by the word of God. And if we will apply love, do it because of our love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not allow ourselves to be controlled by the words of men that will go against the word of God. Ang nanay ko ilang beses nang sinabi sa akin, anak, ang mga kapatid mo, 
napapariwara your brothers and your sisters are in the wrong way why don't you start a work here in Naga City so that you can take care of them you see if I will allow emotion to get the better of me I might do it because my mother is the one requesting me to do it and my brothers and sisters are the subject of her request but ladies and gentlemen I go and I follow the word of God not the words of men but I pray for them I desire that they will be saved I pray Lord send somebody that can reach them there but ladies and gentlemen it might be hard but I and must I must follow what God is telling me to do amen but you know sometimes we allow filial uh, relationship to block God's will in our lives why pastor the, the, the Bible says honor thy father and mother yes do we need to honor them of course it is what the Bible says that we need to honor them so pastor is obeying them not a part of honoring of course it is a part of honoring but there is a higher authority than them and that is the word of God so if what they're saying is against the word of God obeying them is dishonoring them I, don't, I hope you, you, you understand what I'm saying I told our member if your father will ask you to go into a store and buy beer tell your father this father I love you so much that I cannot obey you because if I will buy that beer or cigarette for you then I am helping you destroy yourself so I'm not going to do it did that disobedience disrespect the father no it shows love for the father because he, she will not allow her father to be destroyed and she will not be a part of it you know what happened because of her stand the father got saved by the grace of God and, and that lady what is he right now pastor he is now a wife of a pastor by the grace of God why because she learned how to stand according to the word of God and God honored and rewarded her stand or her belief or her respect to the word of God so ladies and gentlemen we are Baptists and as a Baptist we believe that the word of God is our final authority please consult God's word in every decision that we're going to make in life why because if not then we can be going into the path of apostasy because once you disobey the word of God once you can do it again and again and again and again and our judgment will be clouded by obeying men instead of obeying God. Number two, church authority, Matthew 18, 17. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. So, this people or the gainsaying of Kore is encouraging people not to respect the authority of the church you see for these people the church is just another place to attend the truth of the matter is the church are people and if you are a part of the church you must respect and honor the authority of the church amen the bible says to God be uh, glory in the church and our church our life must be governed by the word of god through the church anything that we do without the authority of the uh, church of god will not be recognized in heaven because it says whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven so there is an authority inherent to the church that the lord jesus christ uh built and such authority comes to the point that if a man will not allow himself to be subjected to the church he will be treated as an unbeliever you see that is why you do not despise the church oh i don't care if you don't like me here or i'm hurting or whatever i can find another church i don't care you see that is despising the authority of the church pastor pastor you mean to say that i 
am a prisoner of the church. Of course not. If the church is doing the will of God, support it. If the church is not doing the will of God, then you have the right. Because a higher authority exists, and that is God. Just be sure, listen to me, and prove from the word of God that what you are doing is right. And what the church is doing is wrong. But pastor, that is my preference. Well, you may have your preference, but we have the doctrine. And the doctrine is higher than preference. It is my preference not to engage, but it is the command of God to contend for the faith. So, do you have a preference not to obey the command of God? So that is the question that you need to ask yourself. Am I commanded to contend for the faith? Am I commanded to prove all things? Am I commanded to test every spirit? Am I commanded to, when I get home, to open the Bible to see if the preaching preached in the church is really according to the word of God? Is that a command? If it is a command, you better obey it. If it is not a command, that's up to you. But I can assure you, since day one that we have been studying these things about the authority of the word of God, the authority of the church, we have read and heard again and again and again, not only from me, not only from the preacher, but even our guest speakers, that we need to be sure in what we believe. And that is the, that is the reason why we are having so much problem today. It's because people of God stop to study diligently the word of God and they are just accepting anything and everything that the pastor behind the pulpit is preaching. Eh, naging problema natin. Tanggap lang ng tanggap. Fighting. Sumpa ka pag hindi ka nagbigay, magnanakaw ka, tanggap. Pag nagbigay ka naman, bubuksan ang bintana ng langit, babagsak sa'yo pagpapala, tanggap! Even though there is no evidence of truthfulness in those that were said, Pastor, that's in Malachi. Yes, that's in Malachi. And Malachi, is talk, God is talking to His own people, Israel. He's not talking to the church. So we have no business doing those things that are not given to us by God. Amen? That's why you need to be sure. Okay. If there is a crime, you can, example, uh, you can go into a house and search the house if there are dangerous things in the house or if uh, a violence is being uh, committed inside the house. So you know that. That's in the law. Can you just barge inside the house and do it? No. Do you know why? Because that particular law is given only to the police. Police ka ba? No. So even though you have the right intention and you did it, you will also be prosecuted by the law because you have no right. Sometimes we, go, we call that vigilantism. You have no right to kill people. You have no right to arrest them except if there is a citizen's arrest in the law. And a citizen's arrest might fulfill, must fulfill several circumstances in order for it to be valid. But until and unless the authority is given only to the police or those that are in the government, you cannot just do it because it is not for you. Question. You were asked to give your tithes because if you will not give it, you will be cursed by God. Question. Is it for you? Hmm. Find it from the word of God. Look at it from the word of God. Question them that are teaching you. There is nothing wrong in asking question. Amen? They ask you to give your first fruits. Is it for you? They ask you to worship God on Sabbath day. Is it for you? If it is not for you, then don't do it. But what was given to us is something that we need to do by the grace of God. Amen? That's why you need to respect the authority of the church as long as the church is acting uh, within the parameter of authority given to it by God. Because again, the highest authority is God. 
Number three, they reject pastoral authority. Hebrews 13.7. Makapag-preach naman para sa pastor. Habi nila, puro ko against eh. Hindi eh. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. God gave pastors in the church. Amen? And they are given an office and an authority in order to nurture you and to feed you the word of God and to guide you according to how we are going to live the Christian life that is written in the word of God. Verse 17 says, number 7 is, uh, remember them, but 13, 17 says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. So you need to submit. Not because I am better than you, but because God commanded you to submit to those that have rule over you. Amen? But if the ruler or the pastor is telling you to do something that is not according to the will of God or according to the word of God, you have no obligation to obey. You see, this is our problem. Pastor, they are in authority and God commanded me to obey them. Yes, you obey them according to the right parameter that is always according to the word of God. But you are so fanatical. You are so extreme that you will say, I don't care what people say. He is my authority. I am going to obey him no matter what. Because when the Bible says, children, obey your parents in all things, it means all things. My, and you call yourself a Bible believer. When God said all things, obey them in all things, all things that is according to the will of God. So what if your parents ask you, commit suicide now? Will you obey it? Of course not. Because it's not according to the will of God. We need to take care of our life. It was given to us by God. We need to take care of our body. It was given to us by God. We need to nurture it so that God can use it for His glory. So what if your parents or your, the authority in your life is asking you something that will destroy the temple of God? You say, I'm sorry, I cannot do it. I ought to obey God rather than man. And that is never disrespect. So, if I am wrong, listen, don't obey me. But if what I am telling you is according to the word of God, obey me. But pastor, I cannot obey you. Why? Because I know something is wrong in your life. Well, you respect the office. If you cannot respect me, I don't care. It doesn't matter. What matters is that what I'm teaching is according to the word of God. And you look at that. But pastor, I cannot do it. Then leave because you must put your spiritual growth first and foremost in your life. Because, you see, this is the point. How can somebody be a hindrance in your spiritual growth? How? Because pastor, pastor is doing something wrong. Are you sure? Or he did something wrong? Is he still doing it? Did he repent or not? Because ladies and gentlemen, all of us has a past. We are all of us. Including JL. Anyway, her past is still, uh, the history is still very short. But we all have a past. And there are things that we are not proud of. In our lives. That is why, listen to me. God gave repentance. And that is why God gave forgiveness. And that is why God gave a fresh start to those people who committed wrong. Why? Because God never keep a score of what people have done in their lives. What's important is what you're doing and what will you do according to the word of God. That is what we need to look at. Because if you're like that, you think that you are better than they. You are better than them. And ladies and gentlemen, 
Nobody is better than anybody. It is only by the grace of God. You see, Pastor, mayroon bang taong hindi mo mapapatawad sa buhay mo? Wala. Bakit? Sino ako? Mayroon bang taong hindi mo na magugustuhan? Wala. Sino ba ako? Pero pag pinagpapatuloy nila yung mali na yun, hindi ko sila gusto. Pero pag tinigilan nila yung mali na yun, at tumingi sila ng tawad, abay, sino ako para hindi magpatawad? Ang luwaliwanag sa Bible? God has forgiven us and we ought to forgive. Just, are you praying the Lord's Prayer? Have you studied the Lord's Prayer? There is a provision there asking for forgiveness as we forgive. How do you expect to be forgiven if you cannot dispense forgiveness? Amen. Amen. That is why in the church, we need the grace of God. And in the church, a leader was given and the Bible says, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. Why? For they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. Whether you like it or not, whether I like it or not, I am accountable to God for you. That is my lot. I cannot do anything about it. That's why if somebody's life is being ruined because of my neglect, I will answer to God. If I ruined your life, I will answer to God. If I neglected my, my ministry, if I neglected my uh, duty to you, then I am answerable to God. But listen, you are not answerable to God for me. It is I who will answer for you in the sight of God. Because that authority was given to me and I need to perform that by the grace of God. So listen, Baptists are on the road to apostasy when they turn from the pure word of God. That's why we need to respect, we need to study, and we need to make the word of God as primary in our lives. Amen? We are on the road to apostasy whenever we question the authenticity of the word of God. That's why when you say that, did God say? That's the same as what Satan did in the Garden of Eden. If the word of God is our final authority, do not interpret it according to your way, do it according to how God said it. And if we refuse to submit to either in our personal lives or in the churches, to the absolute authority of God found in the Bible in matters of faith, order, or obedience, then we are on our road to apostasy. But pastor, are we not going against the government when we try to, example, correct those pastors in politics. No, we are not. Because we are, we are obeying the word of God. We are teaching the word of God. We, we are telling them, Sir, you already have the highest calling. Why step down and disrespect the calling of God? Sir, you are given an office by God and you need to put your all, all of your time, all of your life, all of your talent, all of your treasure, everything in what God has given you why are you taking up another responsibility when all of your time is not even enough to uh, do the responsibility of being a pastor? So we are just helping them. We, that's why they said, oh, you, you just hated Abante. No. I told them, if there is one person in this world who loves Abante very much, maybe it is I. Why? Because I do not want him to continue in that path of destroying the calling of God in his life. That's what we need to realize. I do not hate him. I love him. But I do not like what he is doing. Because he is going against the will of God by joining politics. Though his motive is maybe right. Though his motive may be good. But what is important is the Word of God. So let us, not, let us look at the Word of God and respect it and not in other things or the words of men 
and disregard the Word of God. Okay, let's go on. Number two, uh, not only to reject God's authority, but number two, rejecting God's grace. And this can be found in what we call uh, the way of Cain. I'm not, we're not going to go there, but if you want to read it, you go to Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 12, and in here we can find that Cain was a tiller of the ground. Number two, his offering consisted of the fruit of the ground. Number three, the ground was cursed by God because of sin. So everything that the ground produces is a result of man's work. Look at first, uh, John chapter 3, verse number 12. First John chapter 3, verse number 12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Do you remember when they offer? Cain offered the fruit of the ground, while Abel offered a blood sacrifice or the blood of an animal which was commanded by God. So in effect, Abel, uh, uh, Cain is doing or presenting to God his own works. But Abel is presenting to God the work of others. And in typology, that is the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what do we mean by rejecting the grace of God? It means that they are Believing another way of salvation. Salvation is only by the grace of God. Amen? You cannot work your way to salvation. The price of redemption is the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at 1 Peter 1, 18-21. Not your works. No matter how good you are, you cannot save yourself. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. This was offered by Abel, who verily, who was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last days for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. So it is very clear that the way of Cain is trusting in other things other than the grace of God. Atonement requires the shedding of blood. Hebrews 9.22 For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. But false teachers deny the Lord that brought them. We have read that in 2 Peter chapter 2 a while ago. And false teachers deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, if, who is a friend of Nilo Del Mundo in a, on Facebook? Uh, John, me, and others. Don't you notice that he's posting so many, uh, so many things regarding a Baptist preacher not believing on the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ? He's not telling us who that person is. I know who that person is. And you will know who that person is. But he wanted the pastor first to comment before he will reveal who he's talking about. And who he is talking about is one of the most well known pastor in Bible Baptist Circle. He is teaching that the deity of Jesus Christ is started and it was only created by the Father. So he does not believe that Jesus is God. So he is denying the only Lord that brought them and he is denying or teaching that there is other way of salvation apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, this person is apostatizing. And that is very sad. Because he is pastoring a big church, not only in the Philippines, but they have other churches in the Middle East and in other countries of the world. But that teaching is now being propagated and proclaimed because of him. And he was being challenged by Nilo del Mundo. 
And Nilo Del Mundo said, Why do you have to still carry the name Baptist if you do not believe in the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ? Remember, apostasy means you deny the fundamentals of the faith. And that is very dangerous. Why? Because without Jesus, there can be no salvation. Amen? Without Jesus, there can be no grace. Without Jesus, no justification. Without Jesus, no redemption. Without Jesus, no regeneration. Without Jesus, no propitiation. Without Jesus, no glorification. Without Jesus, there will be no resurrection. But thank God, because Jesus is God from eternity to eternity. Amen? And he came here in the flesh to die in order to pay for our sins. So listen, we are commanded to preach only one gospel, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. But in our time, we need to come back, number one, social gospel. Because there is a social gospel that is being preached today. It is being preached by what we call people who are soft separatists, and, some, and most of them are apostate who do not believe in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Number two, there is the bloodless gospel. Some teach us that the blood of Jesus Christ is already dry and it cannot save people anymore. So there is another way of salvation without the blood of Jesus Christ. Number three, the no repentance gospel. It is heresy. If you believe in a no repentance gospel, you will repent because you will find yourself in hell when you die. And then the gospel of works, legalism, and the gospel of emotionalism being preached and propagated mostly by charismatic and Pentecostal churches. You see, if you allow these things, then it will develop into other form of a different gospel so that that will eventually confuse and deceive people. There is one instance in the Bible that happened that error found its way into the church and later on it destroyed the church. That's the reason why uh, uh, the, the churches that the Lord Jesus Christ established apostatize because of this. Look at Acts chapter 15. We will read this, and the, but, but we will be uh, fast here. Let's start in verse number 1. Acts 15. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. You see? This is the first error taught about salvation during the existence of the early church. This is what we call uh, salvation by legalism. They added something to salvation. Look at verse number 2. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them. You see, Paul and Barnabas contend the faith against them. There is a great dispute wherein Paul and Barnabas stood against this error. Why? Because it will destroy the church. It will destroy so many people. You may say, I am not concerned. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a child of God, you should be concerned. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem and to the apostles and elders about this question. So they asked for help in order to resolve this. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenix and Samaria declaring the conversion of the Gentiles and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. You see, in spite of the controversy, they keep on preaching the word of God. So you can do the same at the same time, both at the same time. You do not have to just do one and neglect the other. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. To add works into their salvation. Salvation is by grace. Now, salvation is becoming by works. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. Why do they still have to consider? Because they are Jews who got saved. And when there had been much disputing, again, there is a discussion. 
Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Because he was given the authority. So he's the one to open the gospel to the Gentiles. Peter testified. And God which knoweth the hearts bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. He said salvation is the same. Our salvation is the same as their salvation. The Holy Spirit that we have is the same Holy Spirit that was given to them. And put no difference between us and them. Purifying their hearts by faith. So why the issue? Because all of them are circumcised. According to the law of Moses. But they did not get saved because of that. They got saved because of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's telling them, that's not the point. That's not to be included. So there is no difference when it comes to salvation. Verse 10. Now therefore, why tempt ye God? You're tempting God. You're going against God. And no Christian should be silent or quiet when people are going against God. To put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. Hindi nga natin magawa pagkagawa mo sa kanila. Hindi nga natin nasunod, pasutunod sila. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. There is no difference when it comes to salvation. There is only one way, and that is the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we are on our way to apostasy whenever we add something or remove something from the way of salvation that God had provided to us. Amen. And by the way, if you will look at the history of the church, this particular issue became the seed for the first apostasy in the church. And we call that baptismal regeneration or baptismal remission. They started to teach that unless you are baptized, you cannot be saved because it was preached to them by the Lord Jesus Christ and others so they made another way of salvation. And you know the result of baptismal regeneration? It caused hundreds of thousands of Baptists to be martyred because they refused to baptize babies. And they refused to baptize according to the state church. And they did obey what God has given to them. So let us be careful that we do not change the gospel of salvation. Amen. Number three, the error of Balaam, rejecting God's standard. The error of Balaam, rejecting God's standard. Number one, rejecting God's what? Authority. Number two, rejecting the grace of God. Number three, rejecting the standard of God. And this is what we call the way of Balaam. We, we know the story, amen? He was asked to curse Israel by who? Balak. But then he refused. But he was offered a great honor to do what Balak wanted him to do. But when he was on his way, he was rejected by his ass. The horse uh, spoke to him and told him that what he's doing is not right. As he attempted to do what he was asked to do. But then again, he saw that he should not curse the people of God, but he gave them a judgment that eventually destroyed them by telling them to cohabit with strange women that is not of their own country. And that destroyed the people of God. Why? Because they lowered the standard of God that they should be pure by the grace of God. Amen? Because the way of Cain is perverse. Look at Numbers 22, 32. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. It is not according to, God's, to, the, to the will of God. It is against 
God's way. Look at 2 Peter 2.15. which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. He loves money more than God. He loves money more than the will of God. And look at Jude 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. So listen, if you are in the ministry for reward, then you are following the error of Balaam. That you think that you can get something for yourself out of the ministry instead of giving everything for the ministry and in serving God. So Baptists, are designed by God to be, number one, peculiar. First Peter 2.9, we will not read it, but peculiar people. To be exemplary. John chapter 17, verse 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And to be separated. For Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 19 to 22. Just note and read it in your uh, house. So, this is what God wanted us to do. So, we are on our way to apostasy when we lower the standard. That's why the Bible says that we ought to know how to behave in the church of God, which is the house of God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. So, number four, lastly, rejecting God's church. Rejecting God's church or the seduction of Jezebel. Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. This is the last uh, area wherein the devil is trying to infiltrate the church to make it apostatized. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrifice unto idols. So we know Jezebel, amen? In the Old Testament, her story is in First and Second Kings. She was a Syrophoenician princess and the daughter of King Etobaal, king of the Phoenician Empire. Jezebel marries King Ahab of the northern kingdom when Israel is divided into two in order for them to consolidate the political power in their favor. So we can see that the story of Jezebel is one clear example in the Bible that religion and politics should not mix together. Why? Because we know that Ahab later on desired the vineyard of Naboth. But because Naboth does not want to give it to him, Jezebel asked Ahab to create a law so that Naboth will be able or will be forced even by death to give his vineyard to Naboth. That is the problem. If you mix government and church together, if the church receives the temporal power of the government, the church will insist on her belief and will force other people to do what they want other religion to do. That is why if you will look at the trail of blood, that is the result of the mixture or the uh, uh, mixture of church and politics. And then you, we can see that Jezebel died because of the uh, coup d'etat that Jehu actually performed during that time. And the death of Jezebel showed God this favor for Christians using the government to force religious matter to other people. That is the reason why these two really cannot mix. So let us look at Jezebel and we will end. Number one, Jezebel was the pagan wife of King Ahab. If you are taking note, 1 Kings chapter 16, 29 to 33. She introduced Baal worship into Israel. So Israel before is worshiping God, but when Jezebel came into the scene, she introduced Baal worship. 
He started by cutting off the Lord's prophet or killing them. 1 Kings 18, 1 to 4. And then she was a benefactress of 850 false prophets. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 19. So he, she created her own prophets. False prophets that are worshipping Baal. And then in chapter 19 of 1 Kings, he stirred up Ahab to work wickedness. 1 Kings 21, 25. I will just read this. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. So you can see how influential Jezebel is in the life of Ahab. And how cunning Jezebel was. But because of that, things that are happening in 2 Kings, Jezebel saw that things are now getting out of hand. And Jehu is going to use God in order to restore order in Israel. So this is what happened, 2 Kings 9.30. Let, let us read this. 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 30. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face and tired her head and looked out at a window. And if you will continually read this, she tried to seduce Jehu. So that if she can get Jehu, she can hold on unto the power. But God has a different uh, desire or plan for Jezebel because it was prophesied that she will die. And then she died, proving that the promise of God is not slack concerning us. 2 Peter 3.9 The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You will see that Ahab was provided by God so many chances to repent of his sin. But he opted to believe in Jezebel, so because of that, he died together with Jezebel. Why? Because God will not allow these things to happen in unto his people. Now, going to our time, Jezebel was mentioned in Revelation 2.20 and she was mentioned to the church of Thyatira who allowed her a false prophet to teach and to preach in their church. That's why we should not allow lady pastors or woman pastors because they are not sanctioned by God all those that have women pastors are following the footsteps of Jezebel. And they will be, they will, uh, be destroyed later on because of what they are allowing to happen in their church. So we can see that the teaching of Jezebel was seduction targeting the servants of the Lord. Look at again at Revelation 2.20. We're almost finished. Uh, two more verses. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou was sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrifice unto idols. So that was her teaching. Listen, this is something that is a uh, amazing, remarkable, remarkable in a negative sense. How can Jezebel teach fornication and idolatry? And the very victims are the leaders of the church. Pastor, is that happening? Just look at the church of Joel Austin. Victoria Austin is doing it. And just look at what is happening uh, in other Baptist group. They are now ordaining women. And it will start the uh, fulfillment of Revelation chapter 2, verse number 20. And it's going to destroy the church. So listen to me. The church is on its way or her way to apostasy when we allow politics to influence our churches. And sad to say, ladies and gentlemen, as I end, this is now happening in our churches today. We have started the National Baptist Day 
showing the Philippines that Baptists are mighty, that Baptists are powerful, that Baptists is a force to contend with. Therefore, the government must listen to us. Listen. If the government will listen to us, we will now start to enforce things according to our belief that God designed to only be preached to faithful men so that they can teach others also. And there is one preacher who said in, in his post, Men of the Bible should be the one to write the divorce law in the Philippines. Can you imagine that? That he believes in divorce now. Provided the people of God or the Baptists are the ones who are going to write the divorce law that will be applied in the Philippines. And when he was asked, so do you believe in divorce? You know what he did? He removed the post. So why are we now bold in doing that? Because we believe that the government already took notice of us. And we will use our political clout in order to control others by what we want. Do you know why we did that? Because we say that if there are people that should govern the Philippines, it should be the people of God. Because we know the truth. There is no danger because what we are going to do and, and propose as a law are only the things that are found in the Word of God. Therefore, we should be the ones to be put in authority. But you know what the Bible says? Therefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. When power comes into our system, then we will start to abuse it. And when we start to abuse the power, we will be like Ahab, that if we cannot get it, we will create a law in order to get it for ourselves. That's what happened during the Dark Ages when Catholicism and the government married or mixed together, they persecuted other churches. And even when the Church of England, who was supposed to be Christian, came into power, they persecuted the Baptists. And among all the religions during that time, only the Baptists did not become a church or a state religion. And they fought against it. And it's sad to say that we are turning away from what our forefathers fought for. And we want to seize power. Not only spiritual power, but even temporal power. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just a step away to the great apostasy that is mentioned in the Bible. And by God's grace on Saturday, we are going to study the great apostasy that will happen right before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we stand up, please? Well, every head's bowed.